Hey everyone, Aaron Stewart, Data Access Golf, the live show that is actually simulcast. We, we this is where this is our podcast, and we have the live show going over the results from last week's tournament, the Northern Trust, and kind of discussing the data that got Patrick Reed to where he was as champion. Compare it to actually, we're now comparing it to 2019 numbers. Now that those are wrapped up. We have been using the 2018 numbers for the entire year, but now we've got an entire year of 2019 numbers. So we'll take a look at those. It was a, actually quite surprising change in 2019 numbers. How much it, it was very interesting because Patrick Reed has played much better statistically in 2019 than he had in 2018. And yet some of us would say that he's been struggling, including himself, which is completely fascinating. So let's jump right into it. We'll start the intro. Welcome to Data Access Golf, your home for rapid golf improvement. And now, from the thin air of the Rocky Mountains, next on the number one tee, your host, Aaron Stewart. Thanks for joining me here, Aaron Stewart. Glad to be with you here on this Data Monday as we discuss the the Patrick Reed victory there at the Northern Trust. Um, first, obviously, the first event in the 2018-2019 um, playoff series on the PGA Tour, and it moved Patrick, did some really good things for Patrick Reed. Uh, first and foremost, obviously, we have, since Patrick Reed's win at the Masters, we haven't heard much from him. And if you have been paying attention to the talking heads of golf, they've talked about how uh, Patrick Reed is struggling, and you can definitely see some effects of that. But uh, one of the coolest things, I think, that came out of his, his post-round, post-tournament interview was this idea that he took 10, 10 days off and didn't touch a golf club and then came back and started feeling everything and, and everything made more sense. And going back to the discussion that we had about Jordan Spieth in our last podcast, and I believe that the, the podcast was titled something like, what, what is going on with Jordan Spieth? And we talked a little bit about how we can get um, thinking too much about our golf games and trying to control too much in our golf games, and it actually makes us uh, poor players. And it really doesn't matter the level that we're at. And we see this even in PGA Tour pros. And it, so it was very cool to listen to Patrick Reed discuss his experience with that. And it really was, hey, I just took 10 days off. I didn't touch a golf club. I just hung out with my family. I cleared my head, and I came back, and I started playing better golf. And I could start feeling the club. Okay, what does feeling the club mean? So he said he could feel the club in his back, so he could feel it. That means that he is not in his head, right? He is with his club, which is outside of his head, and that's where we play our best golf. So he was feeling the golf club. He was experiencing the golf club, and lo and behold, his game came back. Now, there's no question that Patrick Reed, I mean, he knows how to play golf. He's played super good golf. For a very long time, he was a absolute giant killer at, uh, what is it, Augusta State. He, um, We've seen him in the Ryder Cup. When he's not thinking about anything but the moment and being in the moment, Patrick Reed plays unbelievable golf, and he's afraid of nothing. But what's the one thing that can trip up Captain America and Patrick Reed and all of that, fearless, that little sucker up there, his very own mind and thinking about it too hard. He said, I was thinking about it too much. I was working too hard. I was exhausting myself. He was trying to force something. He was trying to think and force and push his way through his, his slump, I guess we could call it, right? It's hardly a slump, right? We, he, he won a, a major, and now, you know, next year he wins a playoff event. So um, if that's a slump, if that's Patrick Reed's definition of slump, or our definition of slump for one like Patrick Reed, uh, we're, a, we're a tough bunch to impress, that's for sure. So anyway, so really cool stuff there. It just goes, again, to show everything that we talk about here at Data Access Golf is really about that, making sure that we are paying attention and experiencing our golf swing not trying to think ourselves through a golf swing. And there's a very, very distinct difference in those two. 
ways of playing golf. One's super enjoyable and super fun, and one's completely frustrating and exhausting, and, and yet we still hit a really good shot, and it feels so great. And we, we don't know why it felt so great, but it feels so great that we want to do it again, and we think that this thing's the thing that makes it possible for us to do it again. And this little guy up here, between the gray matter, between the two ears, is literally a disaster at playing golf. Just the worst possible golfer in your world. This this guy needs to stay out of it. So anyway, I think Patrick Reed kind of learned that a little bit. It'll be fun to see how he finishes out the year and and how that uh, how that is going forward. I sadly. Sadly, most people don't see it necessarily that way. They see it as, hey, you know, I just, I found my game again. Well, it was never lost. You just quit thinking about, and, you know, literally when you think about your game, you have forced your game into hiding. When you quit thinking about your game, your game magically appears. Because it's just you. or just who you are. Uh, there's, no, there's no rocket science to the golf swing, folks. Yeah, it's a very complicated move, but... Your, your body handles very complicated moves and very complicated systems all day, every day. The golf swing's no different for, for the, the body. It's a, a pretty simple move for the body to per perform, and, unless you're trying to think your way through performing it. Okay, cool. So great. Just another backup from Patrick Reed. It was cool to listen to him talk about it. Honestly, it was cool to hear Patrick Reed excited about going home and seeing the kiddos and hanging out with the family. He's had, obviously, a, a long, uh, sort of sad story with his own family. So I just thought that was cool. He wanted to go home and hang out with his kids. And I think all of us who have kids get that. So good on him. I hope that he does enjoy it. It's really cool that his, um, that his little girl, his kids kind of understand, right? Dad's bringing home a trophy. They don't like it when dad leaves. But coming home with a trophy apparently makes it a little easier. So, all right, let's jump right into the data. and We'll compare that to our benchmarks and see where it takes us. So the first screen here, I, I, I normally do a kind of a bio screen on the players, but I'm not going to do that today because Patrick Reed is pretty well known. And his um, his Ryder Cup um, performance, he, um, he was one that really worked his way onto the golf tour through Monday qualifying which is spectacular. I mean, really, really cool stuff. So we're just going to jump right in and start looking at the benefits of this. And I thought this was pretty interesting. Patrick Reed went from 24th in the world and jumped all the way up to 15th with his victory. But the interesting thing is he started the year at 15th. And yet his stats in 2018, his, in 2018 were far were worse than his stats in 2019. He's actually improved in 2019 in many aspects of his game, and yet he had kind of dropped. Again, I think that it was up to, it was in his head. It wasn't his performance. His performance was fine compared to his 2018 performance. So that's that was pretty interesting. He actually statistically had a pretty good year uh, compared. So, And then for his FedEx Cup ranking, this is obviously one that's very big. At uh, 50th, he was going to be in the top 70 going forward, but now it has rocketed him up, which is quite amazing. Um, I don't know necessarily then if, if maybe the playoffs need some adjusting. To go from 50th all the way to second with a victory, I, I was thinking more like taking you from 50th like to 20th or something seems about right for a win. To go all the way up to second seems too big a jump. Um, but hey, you know, they're they're still trying to figure this out. We've only got three tournaments now in the playoffs. And so it's kind of reset. We're trying to figure it all out again. But obviously, as Patrick's happy with the 50 to second. He's not going to argue any differently there. So an interesting looking trophy, right? It looks very similar to the FedEx Cup in my mind. So, all right, let's keep on moving here. Um, so what does this mean for Patrick Reed? Come on, dude. Oh, I have to do it here, don't I? There we go. Did that work? Yeah. So, okay. So what does this do? I need to get myself out of the way. I can't even read that. Ooh. Come on, folks. There we go. Get me out of there. Awesome. All right. So I don't, hopefully you can see this, but essentially one through 10 in the FedEx Cup, it changed a little bit. We've got Brooks Kepka held on to the top spot, but he's only got a 206 point lead now. Uh, where you got Patrick Reed sitting, but Roy McElroy bumped down to third, was in second. Matt Kuchar then bumped down to bumped down to fourth. John Rom 
uh, all the way up to fifth. Patrick Cantlay, sixth. Xander Shoffley, seven. Abraham Answer, really good tournament for him, right? Coming in, birdies late in the round yesterday to move him all the way up into eighth place on the FedEx Cup. So solid play. And I honestly, Patrick Reed's comments about Abraham Answer, I thought were very professional, very mature, and um, awesome. I think that that <laughs> speaks, I mean, it speaks volumes about uh, Patrick Reed and how far he's come. Um, really cool stuff. I, I really enjoyed actually his interview. I'm not one that really likes uh, to listen to Patrick Reed talk much, uh, but I, I've changed my opinion. He was really a good interview, very interesting, uh, very introspective. He shared a lot about what's been going on. Uh, uh, enjoyable. I, if, if, if some of this lack of confidence that he's been going through the last 14, 16 months uh, makes it so he's a better interview and uh, then great. I mean, that's that's perfect, right? Because um, I really, I did really enjoy his interview for sure. So take a chance to go to PGATour.com and, and watch his interview. He did a great job. So we got Gary Woodland at nine and Dustin Johnson, who looked like he was really going to kill it this week and then had that disastrous Saturday round with Jordan Spieth that was brutal. And now he finds himself in 10th spot. So what does this do for the world ranking? Honestly, it didn't change a whole lot. You've got John Rahm going up to fifth. You've got one through four that basically stayed the same. Brooks Kepka, Dustin Johnson, Roy McIlroy, and Justin Rowe stayed one through four. John Rahm then jumped up from seventh to fifth with his good play, which bumped Tiger Woods down to now sixth in the world. Francesco Molinari down to seventh in the world. Bryson DeChambeau stayed the same at eighth with his play and some controversy on slow play, right? Patrick Cantlay went up to ninth and switch, basically switched places with Justin Thomas, who dropped down to 10th. So those are the official World Golf rankings after the Northern Trust. That's what we're looking at. Um, okay, let's get into the data here. This is kind of where it starts to get fun, as far as I'm concerned. I, I love this part of Mondays when we start to look and how these people are playing, how these players are playing. So Patrick Reed's had kind of a tough year, at least by his standards. Statistically, at least his performance hasn't been too tough. He's actually been improving. But so his consistency rating, he's played in 202 events. He's made 160 cuts. That's a rating of 79%, which puts him right really close. It's, it's a low 79%, but it could, puts him very close into that elite status, which as we know, at one time, Patrick Reed talked about how he felt like he was a top five player. Um, and hey, if he can get up into that elite level and keep playing as he's playing, since he said that now he's won a Masters, he's got his major, at least his, his first major, and he, now he's got a, a, a playoff tournament win. And, and now is eyeing the FedEx Cup, which is another one of his, of his goals. So in good spot to get that done as well. So that puts me... Um, that puts me down to the, anyway, so that puts him into solid and um, within one percentage point of moving up into the elite. And that's over the course of his entire career. 79% is solid. Patrick Reed is a very, very solid PGA Tour player, and he is borderline elite, um, which fits, which fits where I kind of thought he was. I figured he was in solid. I didn't think he was all the way up to elite. But he is, um, even with a, a tough year, getting close to being that elite status, which uh, which obviously is cool. Okay, let's look at the money. I mean, let's look at his performance now. Then we'll look at the money. And this is where I start to get in the way again, don't I? I actually have gone and, and, and changed the size of, um, I've changed the size of the fonts. So hopefully they're easier to read now. And I've changed them, as I mentioned. Now we're looking at 2019 averages as opposed to, uh, 2018 numbers, which I think will be more interesting. So for the uh, for the tournament, Patrick Reed averaged 79 percent of fairways hit. His average for 2019 was 61 percent, which is only six points higher than our benchmark, which is 55 percent. But 79 percent of your fairways, that is some sweet driving of the golf ball. And I saw that he's using a ping driver. I think I knew that, but I'd forgotten. But I saw in some of the folks that he does use a a ping driver which is interesting because he uses Callaway clubs. And um, I always am interested when somebody goes outside of who they have the manufacturer contract with. Um, it just speaks very highly of 
of that equipment. So the fact that ping, he's using a ping driver means that it performs considerably better than anything else he's tried, right? He couldn't find anything with Callaway to get it done. So don't get angry at me, Callaway. That's, that's the facts. Um, and, um, I also play a, a ping driver. So I love them. I think they're pretty great. Um, pretty amazing. When I played ping irons my whole life, I don't play ping irons now. Um, but, uh, the ping driver, I think is just outstanding. Unbelievable sound technology. Crazy that ping who used to, they make, they used to make the worst drivers in the world and the ugliest have now put out such a good product. So, all right. So Patrick Reed in the green, as far as comparing to our benchmarks. At greens and regulation for the tournament, 71%. He averaged for 2019, 66%, which was higher than his uh, 2018 average. I believe that was the one. It was either that or sent. No, I think it was that, greens and regulation. Our benchmark is 65%. So Patrick Reed is very close to our benchmark at 66%. Actually, obviously, six points higher for greens and regulation. Um, but yeah, good, good, um, good tournament for him. Six points higher. Gets the job done. Really tough conditions, too, on the weekend, especially Sunday. So, uh, I, really, if you think of the 79% fairways hit with those conditions on Sunday, I, that was remarkable. Okay, San says he averaged 67% for the tournament, 58% for the year in 2019. Our benchmark is 45%. Essentially, these benchmarks meaning... When we track our own games, if we are below these benchmark performance numbers, we need to be working on that aspect of our game and stay focused on that aspect of our game until we bring it up above the benchmark. Then we can say with all credibility that we have tour quality games, which may not be important to a lot of folks, but I think it's cool to say I've got a tour quality a golf game. Uh, strokes game putting, we see that, that uh, he had a really good week. Uh, 3.16 strokes picked up on the field. He averaged for 2019 0.23, which anything over 0.1 really is pretty good. Um, we saw that I think Jordan Spieth at one point, I think Jordan Spieth is ranked for the year at uh, second at 0.8 to kind of give you an idea of how that all fits out for 2019. Scrambling for the tournament, 81%. He actually is at, you know, 63%, which above the benchmark for 2019. So not too bad there. Here's the one that's interesting. Five footers. I've taken out 25 footers and everything else because we practice our five footers 80 to 90 percent of the time. So um, Patrick Reed was below 80 percent from five footers. So that would be definitely the one area in which he doesn't quite have a tour quality game as far as we're concerned. He needs to work on his five footers. Obviously, this week he played quite well. Five footers weren't a problem, but um, I, it is an interesting list here of those who make less, who made less than 80% in 2018 now. This is not 2019 numbers. I haven't updated that yet. But less than 80% of their five footers over the course of 2018, Ian Poulter, John Rahm, and Kevin Na. That's interesting, right? So putts per round, I've actually made an adjustment to this. I've lowered it from 30 putts per round to 29 and a half. Um, just about everybody was doing more. That We only had one player, I think, that had more than... 30 average 30 putts per round. And that's not where we like to have our benchmark. So I've actually notched that down a bit. But Patrick Reed averaged 28.5 putts per round in 2019. Our benchmark now is 29.5. And I'll get a new list of individuals that putted worse than that. Um, so there you go. So Patrick Reed, everywhere but his five footers, fits very well into our benchmarks. And we can see as far as scrambling, strokes gain, putting, Sand saves, greens and regulation, and driving accuracy. He played better than his his averages for 2019, which would make make some sense, right? So, all right, next screen here. This is a screen I like. The money. I love talking about the money. Obviously, being a um, being a tournament in the playoffs, it's going to pay out a little bit more. So, 1.665 million to the winner of the Northern Trust. He, he played the, he won the tournament with 268 strokes. That equals out to a, just over $6,000 per stroke that he earned. Now per day, $1,416,250 per day with his big check of 1.665 million. What does that equate to per hour? $83,250 per hour, assuming a five hour round, which is very possible if you're not playing with Bryson DeChambeau. Apparently, sorry, cheap shot. Had to take it, right? There's been a lot of stuff going on there. 
For his career, Patrick Reed has earned over $27 million. He has made 160 cuts, which equates to 169,524 buckaroos per cut for one Patrick Reed. I know we talk about this every single week, but you can see there Tiger Woods leads, at least for now, $366,154 per, um, per cut. Rory McIlroy at $340,000, Dustin Johnson at $293,000, and then that Brooks Kepka right behind him. He jumped into this list and jumped up above Justin Thomas, who was fourth, and then this is just winners from 2019. Um, so very cool, very cool jump there for Patrick Reed. As far as these numbers go, these are exactly the same. Uh, the 2019 numbers are over. So you've got Ches Reedy leading in driving accuracy at 75%. Again, our benchmark is 55%. All the way down to Hendrick Stenson, who uses that three wood at 71%. Greens and regulation, we've got Corey Connors, who led the PGA Tour this year at 73%. And Charles Howell down there at fifth at 71%. Uh, onward, sand saves. 68% led the PGA Tour. That's strong. 68% up and down out of the sand. Very rare do you have, and, and last year we didn't have it. Look at that. 68% up and down out of the sand, which is, which is better than the Tommy Fleetwood who led the tour in um, scrambling around the green at 67%. So we literally had somebody who got up and down out of the sand more often than the person who led the PGA Tour in scrambling around the green. Pretty cool, right? So sand play is pretty impressive. Now, if you look at the rest, one through five, Aaron Baddeley finished at fifth at 66%, essentially. Fifth place out of the sand was Tommy Fleetwood at 64%. So that didn't hold true all the way down. Um, but we had one player who finished higher than our highest in scrambling. So pretty cool thing there. I just thought that was interesting to kind of note. And wrapping this show up here, looking at Patrick Reed, our 2019 champion of the Northern Trust, our first playoff. And again, a recap for the year of our um, of our majors champions, Masters Tiger Woods, P.J. Brooks Kepka, and then U.S. Open Gary Woodland and Shane Lowry, where Brooks Kepka had a good shot at both of those, obviously. Had a very, very good year. So off we go to the BMW for next next week. Um, it will be interesting to see how everybody plays. It's going to be one big old final cut. I think tomorrow we'll go over the people that, the players that did not make the cut this uh, this time around because there's quite a list there that we'll discuss. The, obviously, the playoffs are very different this time around. So we'll discuss those names and those players that essentially ended their year this year and we'll figure out where they are going to be playing some are going to have uh, it's going to be a very interesting uh, situation going forward there's um there's some cool stuff to talk about so we'll talk about that tomorrow and we'll wrap this show up right now so congratulations to patrick reed picked up 1.665 million all four rounds in the 60s 66 66 67 69 to get the job done congratulations to him and really congratulations to how he carried himself in the interview. He's maturing. He's, um, yeah, it will be interesting to see how he plays in, you know, say on the President's Cup. He's definitely put himself in a great spot there. And uh, we'll see. We'll see if this maturing process of Patrick Reed continues. And this, um, this idea of getting outside of your head and clearing your head and getting back to what you do, which is his natural ability is always going to be better than if he's trying to consciously control anything. So definitely showed that this week for sure. Um, thank you for joining me. My name is Aaron Stewart. Thank you for joining Data Access Golf. And as always, we like to say as we wrap the show, please remember better data always means better golf. Till tomorrow. Thanks. We'll see you. Thanks for listening to Data Access Golf with Aaron Stewart. Check us out online at dataaccessgolf.com. And we'll see you on the next episode.